when you have financial difficulty and any other difficulty, the first point you do, thank Allah. Many of us think, you know what? We would start, but not with thanking Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, thereafter, my brothers and sisters, seek the forgiveness of Allah to ensure that what you're going through is not a punishment, but rather it is part of the test of Allah. Life is a test. You have to seek the forgiveness of Allah. Why? Because Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them while they are seeking forgiveness. So if you are seeking forgiveness, even what was the punishment of Allah will be converted to a test. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Look into where you have gone wrong. If I am struggling, I need to ask myself, what did I do? Did I eat interest? Did I usurp the wealth of someone? Did I cheat and steal? Did I harm someone? Did I hurt someone's feelings? Have I usurped the rights of someone? Did I swear, backbite? What wrong did I do? Search yourself, introspect. You have to. When you come to the ulama, they will tell you, no, my brother, don't worry. It's a test from Allah. Yes, that is their duty to tell you. But you need to know yourself, search your life. Seize that as an opportunity to become closer to Allah because we are taught that whenever you have a test and that test brings you closer to Allah, it was actually not a punishment, it was just a test. If I'm going through hardship and that hardship brings me into the masjid, wallahi, that was a test, that was a gift of Allah. But if I'm going through hardship and I start questioning Allah, that brings me to the next point, never question Allah, ask Him. Pray to him, make tawbah to him, thank him, but don't question him. Don't say, oh Allah, why me? Why you? There are others who have gone through more than you. Do you want us to give you something bigger? Do you want us to show you if we wanted to fix you, what exactly we would have done? Perhaps that can happen. So Allah says, don't say, why you? When you came on earth, your test, you came here to be tested. Your, a test is like an examination paper. The questions on your paper were already set. You cannot change them. So stop saying, why you? These are your questions. These are your questions. Answer them to the best of your ability. Then you shall die and, and get the result of your examination. Simple. Why don't we look at it as that? We say as Muslims, we have come to this world or to the earth in order to be tested, right? We all believe that. The Quran says, and it's a fact. As you grow older, you realize how true that is. So if I were to go to school and to write a test, what happens? Can I, after the invigilators have handed out the papers in the exam room, and I look at the test and I say, hey, you know what? I don't know the answers here. Why me? Why me? Give me another one here. You cannot do that. You have to try your best, even if you don't know the answer. The most the invigilator will tell you is, listen, try and answer all questions. Don't leave anything blank. You, you may not know. I'm sure we've heard that, right? They say, don't leave blanks. Answer it, no matter how. Try, attempt it. That's what Allah tells us with our tests. You're going through financial difficulty. Come for salah. Fulfill your salah on time. The owner of the solution to your problem is in the masjid. When I say in the masjid, I mean you can get closer to him in the house of Allah. That's what it is. Pray on time. You must enjoy prayer. Cut out everything. I recently came across a wealthy person. And in the masjid, someone told him about his business. You know what he said? He said, my brother, I don't want to talk about business. This is me and Allah. Please don't talk to me about this. I want to go in and concentrate. Subhanallah, I was surprised just listening to this. And I said, look at people, when they come in, they know this might be my last salah. Success is not how much money you have. Wallahi, success is whether Allah is pleased with you or not. When you get Jannah, that's it. Even if you had nothing on earth, even if you walk, were walking around without a home, without anything, no problem. Allah is happy with you. You can be of a far higher level than those who had a lot. It's possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Imagine you come into the masjid, you've cut off completely. You go into sujood. It's just you thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How beautiful is that? This is why Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu istainu bis sabri was salah inna Allah ma'as sabirin O you who believe seek help seek assistance through patience and prayer for indeed Allah is with those who bear patience and why does Allah not say Allah is with those who pray Although it is correct, Allah is with those who pray. But He says, O oh, you who believe, seek assistance through patience and prayer, for indeed Allah is with those who are patient. One of the reasons is, you need that patience in order to pray as well.
Subhanallah. You need patience to pray. You need to restrain yourself from what other things you want to do at the time of prayer. You have a big financial problem. If you do not fulfill your salah on time properly, please don't complain. Probably your problem will start multiplying. And probably you become depressed rather than becoming acceptable, acceptable or a person who accepts the decree of Allah. Big difference. Allah says, when you get close to me, I don't promise you millions, but I promise you will be content. You'll be happy because you are with me. I'm with you. That's it.